Hey guys, Tom itself here with some more Kerbal Space Program. Today I am going to be trying to land and return from Tylo. The third of Jewel's six moons uh, has no atmosphere and eight tenths as much gravity as our home planet Kerbin. So that leaves it in third place for gravitational masses in terms of planets and moons that you can actually land on uh, in the game right now. So it's a, it's a good challenge. It's one of the more difficult bodies to land and return on just because it's so massive. I had a fairly good and reliable ship that managed to get me to Duna, Dress, and Elo without really much trouble. But it's not up to the job getting me to Tylo and back, so I'm going to have to come up with something new in order to get all the way out there and back. And to make things a, a little bit more challenging, I'm going to try and do it in one launched ship. So uh, I'm not going to send up different pieces and then fly them out. I'm just going to send up one rocket, try to get there, and bring it back. We'll see how it goes. One of the first things I'm going to do is make sure that the planets are in the proper position. The alignment, the phase angle, I think it's called, is correct so that I don't have to spend longer or more fuel uh, than I absolutely need to to get out to where I want to be. So it's faster to time accelerate while I'm still on the launch pad, so that's what I'll go ahead and do. If I launch too early or too late, it you know, kind of takes more or less. But a first, first attempt with this particular setup, and up it goes. Things are looking good, yeah, and it starts to wobble. Uh, yeah, well, that would be typical of uh, Kerbal Engineering. Not a problem. We just go back, add some more struts, and try it again. I'm trying to put about 100 tons into orbit here, and to get that up there, I've got 20 of those Rocomax Jumbo 64 fuel tanks. The first six on the bottom there on the outside are just a basic onion. They all fall away at the same time. Then I've got another 12 in asparagus staging, and then the center one. And it makes for quite the mess of fuel tanks, and it... It has a habit to uh, uh, unplanned rapid disassembly, yes. So, so I just go back and add more struts. It, uh, well, if it falls and wobbles its way apart again, I'll just go back and add more struts, and I keep doing this. <laughs> it takes several tries, let's say that. That's why one of the reasons why I'm using MechJeb to do this, because I I don't need to be piloting it while it explodes. I, I feel better about it if it's the autopilot <laughs> that lets it explode, and I can just go back and add more struts. But eventually, we strut the hell out of the thing, and it looks like it's going to make it into orbit. You get some nice, no... Uh, no HUD there, and look, look, going right up towards the moon, and it looks like we're about to lose our last asparagus stage when, yeah, who knows, <laughs> uh, it just decided to explode for some reason. I thought I had enough struts, because it I clearly got almost into orbit last time, and then this time it just wobbles its way loose. <laughs> It was a big chunk of engines, <laughs> and I'm thinking, it's still good, it's still good, right? And it starts leaning over, and I'm thinking, oh, no, let's just, let's call that off, let's try it again. And so, yep, add some more struts, get it back on the launch pad, and send it back out, watch it from the orbital map, like, yeah, it might make it this time. I, I eventually figured out even that I had to, oh, <laughs> I don't know what happened there, I wasn't watching. <laughs> Anyway, that I had to add a few of those little tiny radial engines to the very center stage that I turned on when it was just the last of the ascent stages with the engine going to give myself just enough power to get just into orbit. Anyway, I finally got there and then planned out my planetary transfer. And since I had a little bit of fuel left in the lift stage, I went ahead and used that. It meant I had to turn the entire gigantic long rocket <laughs> into, into position for that maneuver node, but I have finally headed out away from Kerbin. Now that one big engine on the ascent stage is quite powerful, not incredibly efficient, but it's going to be really useful in giving me a kick here on my way out. Once I'm out of fuel in the ascent stage, it's down to my interplanetary stage, which uh, uses three of these atomic rocket engines. Now they're very efficient, but they're not very powerful. And so, well, you see, the burn time here just went up to 14 minutes. Uh, yeah, so, the atomic engines. What can I say about it? Well, rocket engines work on Newton's second law. You're basically throwing spent rocket fuel out of the end as fast as you can. And the faster you can throw it, the less, less you need to throw to get the same change in velocity, or delta V. 
for whatever reason, these atomic engines are really efficient. They throw the exhaust out really fast, and so it doesn't take a whole lot of rocket fuel in order to change your velocity like you want to. It just... They're really, really slow, and so this burn... I'm going to speed it way up, cut out parts, but uh, I end up, because the node system assumes instantaneous changes, and this is not an instantaneous thing at all, I end up uh, a little bit off of where I expect to be when I finish this burn, and I end up spending more fuel than I need to, and then I have to come back and make a, a correction for that. So, <laughs> wasting fuel, uh, and, uh, well... Let's see, so I've got the interplanetary stage with the three uh, atomic engines, and then I've got my lander and the return craft on top of that. So basically three separate vehicles here, and uh, the hard part about calculating the delta V required for that interplanetary stage is that uh, the less I can use in getting to Tylo, the less I need to take, because I have a fairly good idea how much it's going to take to get back but I need to make sure that if I have to make a lot of maneuvers on the way there, if I have to make a lot of corrections, that's going to spend a lot of fuel. And when I'm tugging around the whole uh, lander stage, that's going to that's gonna take up each maneuver with the lander stage att attached is going to take up a lot more fuel than if I had already ditched it. So I'm <laughs> trying to be very careful here, but I don't do the best job. This is my first trip out to the gas di giant Jewel. Eventually, I do get myself to Jewel, and I have to make a minor course correction to keep Lathe from throwing me right into the planet. <laughs> that wouldn't be any good. And what I'm trying to do here is use arrow braking, and that is using the planet's atmosphere to slow myself down. Except, unlike when I'm returning to Kerbin, I don't want to stop completely on the planet's surface. I want it to just slow me down enough that I uh, go into orbit around Jewel. And so this is kind of tricky. I know ballpark, I need to be a little bit above 120 kilometers up, but <laughs> being that precise is quite, quite tricky, and so I have to keep making minor course corrections like freak out here. <laughs> and I, I get a very close flyby of Lathe. Uh, nice view there of Jewel and Lathe, and you'll see some of the other moons off floating around. Uh, very good view, very good view. I need to remember to retract my solar panels here as I go through Jewel's atmosphere, otherwise it will tear them off, and <laughs> that would be very bad. I'm also going to ditch my first two empty fuel tanks, but I've already gone through a fair amount of fuel, and I'm not even in orbit around Tylo. This is somewhat concerning, but I still should have plenty of fuel to make it there and back. Not in a tight spot yet, but I, I need to be fairly efficient in getting myself into low Tylo orbit. Was the re-entry effects are pretty pretty fun to watch. I kind of get a little concerned that one of my empty fuel tanks is going to hit me here, but uh, nothing ends up happening. I, I probably should have just used just a little bit of fuel to push myself away from those. Uh, but <laughs> but uh, nonetheless, I get something else cool to look at uh, as we fly through Jewel's atmosphere. Now, fortunately, there just enough arrow braking that I managed to get into orbit, but it is a very high and very very uh, elliptical orbit, way, way out, probably almost to the edge of Jules' sphere of influence. And so I got to do something about this. But then I realized, you know, I think I'm probably orbiting the planet in the wrong direction. <laughs> so I put a maneuver node at the apoapsis, and because I'm only going at like 60 meters a second up there, it's really easy to change my orbital direction. It's kind of kind of cheesy, but <laughs> okay. And I also raise the uh, the periapsis, the point closest to the planet, so that I will no longer go through Jules' atmosphere. And now it's on to trying to get into orbit around Tylo. So then I was like, all right, I'll just make sure I fly right past Tylo and I'll get into orbit as I fly by. So I, you know, made a minor correction when I was near my apoapsis and then headed on back and found that, oh, I was going a little too fast. And especially with these atomic engines that don't have a lot of power, I couldn't slow myself down enough, and even then it was still taking a ton of fuel, and that wasn't going to work out very well. So then I, I went back and I went through a couple more orbits, and I found myself with a close, uh, a close encounter with Lathe. Lathe has an atmosphere, so I was like, oh, I'll do an arrow-breaking maneuver. 
And I, I came in a little too low, and <laughs> oh yeah, more re-entry effects, but there were going to be no uh, exit effects, so uh, I had to can that idea. Then I finally went back and did something sensible, and just did another arrow working maneuver around Jewel itself, brought my apoapsis way down, brought my orbital velocity down, and things got a lot more manageable. Then, for some reason, I decide, hey, you know what, I've still got too much velocity, let's try another arrow breaking maneuver around the lathe. Because that worked out so well last time, I think I can do better. And I plot my course, and I think I'm going to come in really close and do this just right, because I've looked at the info, and I think I've got it, I get a fantastic flyby, turn off the HUD for some, <laughs> some nice view there, ah, oh, that is that is gorgeous. But I didn't fly by close enough, I didn't perform an arrow breaking maneuver at all, and instead I got a gravity assist, so now I'm headed out of the Julian system and I have to try again. But finally I go ahead and get more reasonable about this and just go ahead and do this simple, straightforward, and fairly easy thing, and just put myself into an orbit close to Tylo's and wait for an encounter with Tylo, and then go ahead and put myself into orbit around it. And with time acceleration, it doesn't take too long before it finally happens. The <laughs> magic of editing here. Anyway, I finally managed to get myself into orbit around Tylo, and then bring the orbit down, and then finally circularize it. And I'm finally ready to think about landing on it. I haven't exactly opted for the luxury model lander here. Uh, there is really no landing pod. It's more like the landing lawn chair. And so, uh, Jeb has to kind of EVA out there and, and try to catch it after we've jettisoned the lander. And yeah, <laughs> it's just a little stressful, but, but it's not too bad. And eventually, I managed to get him back on top of his lander. The issue seems to come with the fact that once we're there and start trying to burn to get down onto Tylo, that something's just off, and the orbit does... <laughs> it's not right. And so eventually I figure out that instead of controlling it from the command seat, I need to control it from the probe body. And we go back and try the whole thing again. I don't think Jeb minds the EVAs. He seems just as excited to hop out every time I ask him to. So here we go again for attempt number two. Been getting better at these. Uh, don't take as long. Uh, don't end up flying past as many times. I don't know. It's something. It feels something like trying to uh, economy drive in rush hour traffic. Just cruising along, waiting for things to happen. Anyway, we finally link up with this lander and then head back down to the surface. And I realize, you know what? I I think I'm kind of high up, actually. I'd, I'd prefer to be at a bit lower altitude to do this. And so I go back and bring the entire craft down to a lower altitude. And, yeah, we get to uh, we get to do EVA attempt number three. If the first two were successful, I just I didn't like how things wound up. And <laughs> something gets stuck. I don't know what happened. If I had a strut that didn't break free or something. But, uh, well... It's okay, it works out in the end, and Jeb, for the third time, manages to link up with his landing lawn chair. Not a big deal for Jeb at all. Be plenty of fuel left in that interplanetary stage to get us back to Kerbin. So it's onto the lander, and we're finally ready to do this. The lander has two stages, and each one of them has just enough fuel, plus a, plus a moderate safety margin. Uh, it's about 3,000 down and 3,000 back, and then each of them have about 3,500 in them. So not a whole lot extra, but it should be plenty to get me down and back uh, without any issues. <laughs> the thing is, I would often rely on Mech Jeb to do this for me, but, well, I want to do it myself, and so it's going to be kind of challenging, although I am going to take the readouts here to make my life a little more interesting. We head down right down to the planet's surface, and I've used up most of my fuel at this point, but I'm right, right above the surface and fairly slow. I think I'm going to make this. I think I'm going to make it. I, I'm not very good at these landing things. I can see my shadow down there. You see it just... <laughs> I'm crossing my fingers, trying to feather that, and it's, it's hard because I can't leave the throttle at the same place. As I burn my fuel, the craft gets lighter, and it's... Uh, it, the, the engines have more impact, and so I have to be even more careful as I run low on fuel quickly, but I'm still moving across the surface rather fast, and I'm out of fuel. This is very bad. As Jeb goes flying here, gets some nasty road burn, and at some point I accidentally hit auto-save instead of auto-load. So, Jeb, are you still alive? Let, let's check the uh, results here. The probe body's still alive because I'm still focused here, but 
Okay, no, I don't see Jeb having died, so he's now stranded on the surface of Tylo. <laughs> oh no, Jeb, our brave Kerbal not. Well, I guess part two will be trying to save Jeb from the surface of Tylo and return him back home safely. <laughs> this has been quite the learning experience for me. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and I hope to see you next time. We'll try and save Jeb.